Hello. Hello. I oh, it's that way. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we will get used to that one day, won't we? We will, yeah. <laughs> Good evening, guys. How are you guys listening? I hope you are all well. Um, had a bit of a grey day today, not not the best weather, but uh, no. hopefully you'll enjoy the next few hours with us, or well, next couple of hours, hour and a half-ish. We haven't mm -hmm. actually set a time, have we, Mark? I think an hour and a half is good. We got a little bit carried away last week. I think it was about two hours, wasn't it? Got to be excited, didn't we? Yes, that's right. So we're live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter this time. Yeah, well, that's, Twitter. that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to uh, share it. <laughs> but you know what I'm like. Right. Uh, da, 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 da. I've got to figure out how to do this. I uh, should be able to um, bear with a share here. You could go go to the, my Facebook page, press share, and, you'll go to, and you can put it onto your page. Right. Done. Sorted. 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 So if you guys could do that as well, that'd be brilliant. Share away. Um, Share away. We, yes. We're very happy actually with the um, response we've had so far. It's been really well received. Um, we've got a lot of watches. So uh, hopefully that will go up and up and you guys won't get too bored. Mm. Yeah. Because um, we, well, yeah. as an idea, you probably realize we, we, we offer a sort of alternative stake on all things paranormal. Um, for many years of doing it, we don't accept everything's paranormal. We like to sort of give a more reasoned approach to things, which I think some people like, actually, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's, 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 it's been fun. We've been doing it long enough. Um, it is. It's, it's, it's not actually um, pooing on everything. People think, like, people that are sceptic dump on everything, but it's not. It's like, show us. Show us the evidence that... Because some people are quick to jump on anything that happens and say, oh, it's yeah. paranormal. And then you've got the other naysayers that are like, eh, no, 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 it's just a load of crap. You know, that's that's nothing paranormal. But we're sort of somewhere in the middle between the two. You know, show us. We're, we, we're open-minded. And that's yeah. what we we're trying to get you guys to be kind a, a little bit more of the same like that. So uh, that's the plan. That is the yeah. plan. So, uh, good, good, evening, evening. good evening, lovely Nigel. Uh, there he is. Good evening, Nigel, Mr. Sadler. I'll organise a walk with you soon, sir. Um, yeah, so today um, we're going to be talking about paranormal equipment. Ha! Uh, so, um, it's going to go horribly wrong, isn't it? <laughs> oh, God. Now, please don't hate us if we do start having r comedy rants about some of this stuff that you, everyone uses. Good evening, mm -hmm. Mr. Suggett from the Veg Growers Podcast. Good evening, Good Richard. evening, sir. Who I was only with last weekend. Good to see you, yeah. sir. Thank you for coming on board. Um, so, and yes, um, I mean, we've all used equipment in the past. Um, Gary's made some great notes here. Um, and I'll offer my two penneth, as we say in the UK, uh, on these on these things. Um, so, yeah, um, you know, if you are have done paranormal investigations, please sort of come on board and let us know what you've been using. You know, your old EMF meters, your K2 meters, hey, your infrared mm -hmm. cameras. I do still use um, your dowsing rods, uh, your ghost boxes, um, or I just make like a transistor radio and put Radio One on. Um, oh. Balanced view, yeah. Mark. Balanced view. Come on, balanced Mark. view. Yeah, I have no balanced view on ghost boxes. It's listening to the radio. That's my balanced view. Oh, you mean the broken radios? Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, the broken radio. Yeah, yeah. 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 Where a microsecond, quarter of a second clip is somebody saying, get out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, um, I'm going to pass it over to, to Gaz just for a second because I'm going to monitor the, 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 the comments and everything. We've got eight people watching so far. That will go up. Um, do you want to sort of start it off, Mr. Brown? Right, yes. Uh, now, the reason we, we sort of chatted about doing I've got my list, a big list, actually. Um, the reason we sort of decided to do this is because if you're an avid watcher of these despicable TV, sorry, the, the TV shows. The lovely that are TV on, shows. Um, that we all find a great source of information about paranormal investigations in a completely unbiased way. Um. They make a big show of the gadgets. Now, I've been doing this quite a while now, and, and I stepped away from it for three or four years, something like that, because um, I used to be all into the gadgets, into how they work, um, what, the, what their uses are, what are the drawbacks with them. 
Well, after looking today at some of the stuff that's being used, I can't believe it. You guys have got too much money. You're buying stuff that I, I just cannot believe. If somebody said a haddock wired up to a washing machine will pick up ghosts, I think people would go out and buy it. You know, it's just absolutely incredible. So what I'm going to do, I've got this list. I'm going to go through it one by one. Um, I'm sure you've used this stuff as well, Mark. You guys listen if yeah. you've used it. Tell us um, what you think about it as well, because it's not just my opinion or Mark's opinion that counts. We're, we're just trying to, for instance, right, okay, somebody that's just started doing paranormal investigations, they've watched Ghost Hunters. Good old Zach Baggins, love him. Um and they, they're walking around a location, whether it's their house or some place that they're visiting, and they're using their infrared camera with night vision or whatever in the dark, and they're seeing things shoot across the screen. Well, Zach jumps on it. He's complete. He's debunked it that it's not an insect or dust. I've never figured that one out how he does that, but he has debunked it that it's not an insect or dust. And it's definitely something paranormal. Well, because Zach's on TV and he's got a show and he's very experienced, you are going to take what well, ladies Zach's like saying. him as well. Sorry? And the ladies like him as well. And some of the men probably as well, yeah. Yes. But uh, you're going to take what he's saying as gospel. Well, This is the problem. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this, this is the problem. What we're trying to do is give you both sides of the argument. It could very well be paranormal. But 99.9999999% of the time, it ain't. It's dust. It's skin. It can be skin floating around on the air currents. Yeah. It could be insects. It could be bloody anything. And a little experiment for you guys to try, okay? In your living room, turn all the lights off. Wait till it's really dark. Turn all the lights off. Put your flash camera, put it into night vision mode. Take a picture. OK, from one place in the room, stand in the corner, then go to your settee, plump up all your pillars, bang on your settee, go back to the corner of the room, take another photo and you'll see thousands upon thousands of orbs. Yep. OK, and it works exactly the same way on a DVR. These things will get caught in the air currents and they will get caught by the IR lamp on the camera, and they show up with these bright things moving intelligently. They're not moving intelligently. They're moving on the currents in the air. Now, I have seen a few of these things um, with actually with my eyes, not through a camera. Now, that was quite impressive. Yeah, That is different, all right? So if you do see that, or if you're using the old 35-millimeter film, OK, if you catch something like an anomaly, like a, a light anomaly or these fuzzy balls, if you catch that on 35 millimeter film, it's a little bit more impressive. But the cameras actually released the, the manufacturers. I think it was Canon and Fujifilm released a statement saying that the chip inside the camera gets confused when these dust particles are only literally centimeters away from the lenses. And it shows up as these fuzzy balls, which yeah. look quite a way away. Yeah. So. There is a, an explanation for what causes these things. Why these shows are still jumping on them, I don't know. So that's just one example of how the paranormal equipment is misused and misinterpreted. All right. So this is what we've tried to do. So I've made a bit of a list of stuff that's used. Now, Mark, you'll use some of this stuff. Some of this stuff I haven't used because I think it's, oh, I need to practice what I preach. Don't poo-poo it till you've used it. But yeah. You'll see what I'm meaning I'm, to me. Most stuff I'm not, not really that impressed with. Um, well, number one, I ain't rich, so I can't afford to buy it. <laughs> no. I, I looked at but one thing got... today. It was, in, oh, it was horrifically priced, mate. And it, it looked like something someone had made in their shed. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm for that. so anyway, shall we start off with a humble EMF meter? Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you want to say your bit, then I'll say my bit. And right, okay. Just bear with me. I've, got, I've just got to wet me whistle a minute. <laughs> okay. That's my whistle, sir. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> EMF, meter, EMF meters. Now, EMF stands for electromagnetic field. Now, EMF meters weren't designed to detect ghosts. We don't know what ghosts are made of. We don't know if ghosts exist. 
So how can we design a piece of equipment to detect them? Because we've got no data to use to detect them. So basically, we will use a EMF detector to check for cables in a wall or something like that. Because anything that has got an electric current running through it gives off EMF. They are the world's best mobile phone detector. All right. So if you're on an event and it starts doing weird stuff, I nearly said sh stuff, starts doing weird stuff, lighting up, beeping, the needle flying across, whatever one it is you're using, the first thing you need to do is check that people have got their mobile phones turned off or at least on a flight mode. Because every time, whether it's ringing or not, every time that mobile phone connects to the satellite, it will beep, beep, beep. And you get that, didn't, 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 mm -hmm. that telltale blip across that everybody freaks out and gets excited of about okay so what we tend to do if we are going to use an emf meter and it's important to understand that any of this equipment should be used as tools only not it, it's not proof of the afterlife it's not proof of ghosts spirits or whatever it's to be used in tandem with other stuff happening so for instance if you're stood in a location and something gets thrown at you a light bulb gets thrown at you and smashes if that it happens in tandem with an EMF spike or a temperature fluctuation or something like that, then that's a little bit more interesting. Saying that, I've got a high reading on the EMF, therefore there's a ghost in front of me, they just don't work like that. Okay? So, EMF meters. So, we're in the location. We've got our, let's call it, let's say K2. K2 meters seem to be the most popular because they're kind of reasonably priced it goes right up to silly money if you want to get like a trifield meter, which is don't buy a trifield meter because I guarantee you'll drop it. It will cartwheel down the stairs and you'll break your art. They're silly money. So don't get them. K2s for the beginner, that will do you. Okay, so you've got your K2 meter. You're in your location. The, thir the first thing you need to do, obviously, switch off your phone, make sure everybody else has as well. Go around and do what we call a baseline reading which is actually go around the room you're standing in, waving it at the walls, waving it at electric sockets, lights, that sort of stuff. Even if the lights are off, you'll have emergency lights that have got current running to them. They will give off a certain amount of EMF. Check people's cameras, that sort of thing, um, will give off a certain amount of EMF. Mark's playing. You've gone big. Playing. I've gone little. What happened there, mate? I'm just, just, just playing. I was trying to make bring you up a bit more. All right, no, don't do that. <laughs> I might be that far away from the camera. So, yeah, once once you've actually discounted any external environmental EMF going on, then maybe you can start thinking about if I'm getting an anomalous reading on the EMF meter, then it could be something weird going on. Doesn't mean it's a ghost, as I say. All right. Um, there is an example of this I can give you. I was actually. Um, doing an investigation at the Northeast Aircraft Museum. I've been, yeah, we did that with Compass. Very good. We were guests, me and uh, Alan Barnett. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant place. Done it four mm. or five times there. Um, it's a fantastic place. And all night we was getting really, really weird readings with the, uh, the EMF meters. What we couldn't see hidden behind a tree in the distance was a uh, mobile phone tower. And uh, the only way we found it really was because hidden behind the building, we weren't getting any EMF. As soon as we went out into the open in the line of sight of this tower, it was going off the scale. So that's just one example of it. OK, so if if you can discount that sort of thing going on, then you've got something that's interesting. If you get a reading when you've discounted all this other stuff and you get a spike out of nowhere, then that's interesting, all right? If that happens in tandem with a temperature fluctuation, as I said, if it happens in, fluctuate in uh, tandem with a knock, a bang, something like that, someone getting pushed, someone feeling weird, okay? So that's another thing. I agree. Now, I think, um, with EMF, we've been in places where, um, and I'm once again, I don't think EMF is saying, oh, it's a ghost, but we've been mm -hmm. outside, <clears throat> uh, and we, I'm satisfied that there is no electrical influence on the k2 mm -hmm. uh, but all mobile phones were, were in our crew room and it was mm -hmm. still flashing about in the middle outside with nothing i i could visibly see or, that was electricity or a pylon nearby 
I'm not yeah. saying it couldn't have been, but remember it was dark at the time. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think like mobile phones. I don't know. I know a lot of people use them now for take photos now, but I'd rather they're left in the crew room or left behind in your bag while we're doing the investigation. That's just this, my this is this is the problem with all of this equipment, all this electronic equipment. It's so open to interpretation. Yeah, and um, outside influences affecting the readings. You know, it is. Um, there's another thing I'll talk about in a minute when we get to sound recorders that something that happened and it was a radio show I was listening to um, where they were making a big show or something and it turned out to be nothing. But um, basically what we're saying is you use this equipment, use EMF meters by all means, but just be aware that there can be a lot of interference with them. There is no proof. There is no scientific evidence out there that says ghosts give off EMF. Nothing. The theory comes that if a spirit is trying to manifest in the ether, it has to get energy from somewhere, whether it's right. from your batteries, whether it's from you, whatever. OK, so they are saying that this manipulation of energy can be picked up with an EMF meter. It might well be the case, but there's no proof of it. OK, so we used it because. Again, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Groups around the world use it and they get interesting results. So. That's what we. That's that's basically why we're trying to do it. Why we're trying to use them. Um, what's Nigel saying there? All electrical, electronic, and microprocessor processor kit will give off EMF. Especially, he's a bit of an expert on sound, by the way. He's Nigel, yeah. uh, especially radio stuff, including Bluetooth, which can be built into all sorts of stuff. So that's a Spot very, on, very Nigel. thank you, Nigel. He knows a lot about sound. It is and unless yeah. you're going to leave all your electrical stuff at home and just go out with a torch. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. just, you, you can't rely on the results from things like EMF meters. As I say, interesting results if they happen in tandem with something else, but I wouldn't I wouldn't pay much heed to them. Um, and the reason I'm, I'm sort of dumping on this stuff, well, not dumping on it, looking at it a little bit more critically, is because, as I say, these, these TV shows um, put a lot of emphasis on the results they get from this electronic equipment, but they yeah. don't give the other side of the argument which is what we need to do. We've got to furnish you guys with all sides of the argument, okay? Um, the second thing is a torch. might seem a little bit more obvious, <laughs> obvious, a torch. If you're out investigating in the dark, you're going to need a torch. But it can be used as a, um, a communication device, really. If you've got a torch sat there um, and it switches on on its own, and it's happened. I've seen I it happen. I've got it on camera. I'll find and out if we play it next time. Yeah, please do, Mark. Um, I'll be part of, yeah. And, and, and you can say, if that is you, can you switch it off? And it goes off. Um, did you used to live in this location? If you did, will you switch the torch on again, please? Torch comes on. So things like that, you know, it can actually be used in, in that sort of way. Um the obvious, you're going to be walking around in the dark, you're going to need a torch, like I say. But uh, there are uses. There's more than one use for these for these sorts of bits of equipment. Um, anything you walking around? Sorry. Yeah, go on, Mark. Anything you want to say about it? Just when you walk around with torches, because I'm trying to advocate not doing it in the dark. You know, twilight, yeah, but we need a bit of feel light. You know, I keep saying it's another subject altogether. You could have a spirit or ghost right next to you, and you're not even going to know it's there because you can't see anything. Um, <clears throat> but with torches, you know, sometimes people have done the investigation, done the vigil or something. They switch their, their torches on, and it's right in your face, and you see orbs yeah. <laughs> all over the place. Always keep your, your your torch going down to the floor, pointing to the floor, yeah. so we don't get blinded by them. But yeah, that's very good. We, we've had some interesting stuff with um, with lights uh, on torches or on little uh, uh, audio recorders, anything where there's a little light that can be used to manipulate that. So that's, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's, an, that's an interesting point there, Richard. Um, amount of times the torch flickers are turned off just by a gentle knock. Yeah. Yes, Richard, we've had that quite a bit. Um, myself personally, I've dropped a torch. I drop them on several occasions, and they're never right after that. You know, they, they flicker and switch on and switch off, and people make a big show of it. Oh, it's paranormal, your torches. No, it's, it's got a duff connection because I've dropped it so many yeah. times. So um, that is something you've got to take on board. But if you're using an old, a new torch and you don't get the flicker in and you've put it down, it's just switching on and off in response to specific questions. doesn't happen very often. 
then that's that's a reason to get a little bit more excited about it. But um, the 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 investigating at night thing, Mark. Um, just play devil's advocate for a minute. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I I, I do prefer the nighttime investigations. Basically, I mean, if if you're going to see uh, a light anomaly, you're more likely to see it at night. It's going to show up better at night. I don't. Um, really, I, I, I'm I'm from a different. But I don't think light anomalies are spirit. Yeah, I've not seen any. I know some people say that they do see them. People who are mm -hmm. psychic see them. I'm not taken that way, but um. Mm. Okay. Well, do you remember? Do you remember <laughs> telling you last week about that one in the coal mine where that whole yeah, full yeah. apparition started off with light anomalies, which we wouldn't have seen if the lights were on. So, you know, I think there is an argument to be made for it. Some people just prefer it, as I say, it's quieter at night. It's not so much traffic about. Not it so depends many where you are. I don't, I don't always what? support that theory. It depends where you are. You could hmm. be, you know, for example. Um, yeah, if you're in Chillingham Castle, it don't matter, does it? You're in the middle no. of nowhere. So. Yeah, <laughs> if it's in the middle of nowhere, then, you know, especially a lot of people do urbexing. Um, yeah. I don't think it really matters. Um, I like doing, you know, around sort of – my person, I like to start doing around 6 o'clock in the evenings, maybe, hmm. twilight time. But there's no reason you can't do it. And I said, I told the story last week, people say, goes at 9 o'clock in the morning. What? I just oh, yeah. Don't, yeah. Yeah, you know, a lot, a lot. Most ghost sightings are actually happening in daylight, don't they? They don't yeah. actually understand or realize that they've seen a ghost. It just, no. it's that matter of fact looks that real. So, yeah, there is an argument for both sides of it. I, I just like it because it's spooky at night. <laughs> so. Well, that's it. I'm, I'm, and from, I, I, all right, I'm, I'm going to be a bit of a hypocrite now. Mm -hmm. From a filmmaker's point of view, I like doing them with night vision. That's just me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm a been, been a bit of a hypocrite there. But generally, I don't want to. Be, I'm not there to be spooked though, Gareth. You know, I'm, we have all been spooked. I've been spooked loads of times. Mm -hmm. um, that's not the reason I, I do it. Is to be spooked. Um, yeah. It comes no, with the territory, to, really. We're it? trying to get answers, aren't we? Basically, yeah. our own personal proof. And and that's an important point, actually. The fact, I mean, you you can see a full apparition like that. That one I told you last week about the coal mine. Mm. Now that that gave me all the proof I need that there is something weird going on. Whether yeah. it's proof of life after death, I don't know, but there is something going on. Something is being seen. Um, now I can go and tell a dozen people that no one's going to believe that I saw it. So you, all you can do is go out there and investigate and get your own personal proof. Don't rely on what you've seen on the tv because when i first started watching a certain tv series in this country i thought wow i mean this is groundbreaking stuff this is incredible and it still was it still was groundbreaking at the time i was still yeah it. It was really but it took me a long time to figure out it was a load of bullshit mark you know what i mean so you know what i mean this is what i'm saying it, credible people where they're brilliant actors and all that, and you take what they're saying as gospel until you actually go out and do it for yourself and you start thinking, hang on a minute, it's not really like that. Things don't get thrown. People don't run out screaming, you know. So um, do it for yourself. Go out and learn and do it. Learn by doing it, you know. So that's, that's probably yeah, basically what we're trying to say here. Yeah. When I see um, somebody who are like um... – Trainee investigators, some of these kind hmm. of groups, you're your trainee investigators. What's that all about? I don't, who's I you, don't, who are you? To, who are you to tell somebody else how to do something when they're not? That's it, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But look, it's like me trying to run a course on Santa's elves. Okay, I'm going to break a lot of hearts here. Santa. <laughs> I like that analogy, yeah. yeah. On, on how to interact with Santa's elves. It, 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 it's, it's that, there's no proof that spirit, there's no scientific evidence that ghosts and spirits exist. Now, I'm not trying to dump on your own personal stuff that's happened to you, you know, your experiences, that sort of stuff. If you've had that personal experience that you're convinced that there is life after death, a medium has come up to you and given, given you that piece of information that has left you in no doubt then brilliant for you. I'm jealous, you know. But to run a course saying this is how you investigate, this is how you interact with spirits and ghosts, what? <laughs> I hope and they're not people, charging money for it, mate. Some people we know in the past have done that. And I used to cringe at it. They wanted me to come on board and I was cringing, thinking, no. Paranormal, a paranormal academy charging money for it. Is this like a course you go on? No, I think, I, think, I think he's being funny, is old Rick. 
Oh, right. Okay. I thought it was the actual name of the thing. Yeah. But yeah, it, guys, if anything you got to pay for, I'm a, I'm a bit. Not your organisations mm. like the Ghost Club or anything. I'm not talking about those kind of places or ASAP. I'm not talking about them. They're great. I'm talking about some people who you don't know. Sort of saying, "Come on, I'll give you a certificate and be a paranormal investigator. Stay well clear." If you well. want to learn how to be a paranormal investigator, research um, Harry Price. So all you got yeah. to do, where his investigations in Borley Rectory, that kind of stuff. I'm not saying Borley Rectory was the no, I don't, do think that any, you know me, I don't think anybody's haunted. I think it's everywhere. So, Frank Humphreys, I think your message. Don't you read your messages, sir? So, did you want to come on tonight? <laughs> I've sent you a message. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, look at Ghosts and spirits are real. Just ask Zach Baggins and Carl B. Carroll. Oh, Carl B. Carl B. T. Yeah, I know, I know who you mean, mate. And uh, yeah, you've picked the two names there that really get my blood boiling. So. <laughs> <laughs> I but don't know that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I best not comment. <laughs> no comment, mate. Everyone's entitled to an opinion. I think Zach Bally, Baggins is full of it. I, I, I have no. I personally have no time for that kind of rubbish. It's just rubbish. But it's very popular. Oh, so what it do I know? Really, is the worst kind of ass gravy you'll ever see, mate. And it is. It makes a mockery of of what we do. It really does. Yeah. So I, I try not to watch it, but every now and again, I'm flicking through the channels and he's on. I think, oh, come on, redeem yourself, Zach. Say something intelligent and it never happens. So, yeah, there you, there you go. It might work, guys. TV shows, if they need to do the scare factor on the paranormal TV shows, there's a lot of them out there. There's been a real resurgence in the last couple of years. Mm. <clears throat> and they need that phenomena to get recommissioned. Unless they get millions of viewers... They need something to happen. They can't go in. Most investigations, Gaz knows, we go in, nothing happens. Nearly it's all the time. He's only hours of them. He's yeah. bored them. Yeah. But you go into these TV shows and things happen all the time. Isn't that incredible? Mm. Well, because they yeah. want to get recommissioned. Come on. Big people enjoy them. They know it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, but... we, we, we've seen them do these locations where it's kicked off all night for them. Um right weird stuff impressive stuff on camera and we've gone and done the the locations after them and not just once two three four times i never got a thing mm. never got a thing and it kind of makes you wonder you know is there something iffy going on here now um i'm not gonna whistle blow on stuff i've been told but it really opened my mind as to what is allegedly going on and it's ratings. That is all it is. It's well, ratings. ratings. You know, get the viewers or your show will get cancelled. That's basically yeah. it. Richard so, Felix. Um, is, I mean, everyone loves Richard Felix. He's lovely. He's lovely. Richard's Richard's on something. And I wish I knew what it was because that yeah. bloke has got too much energy. He's great. <laughs> I absolutely love Richard Felix. He's, a, he's, he's an absolute priceless. gentleman. Absolute yeah, gentleman. I'm yeah, and I mean, there was, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, Mark. There was a, a time there where he was sort of guilty by association, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But um, I've done some projects with Richard actually in the past. Yeah, yeah, he, he was guilty by association, as were a lot of the others. But well, he told us a real story of what happened. But I won't, I'm not repeating that here. That's not my point. <laughs> yeah, um, but I mean, I'm I'm friends with a lot of people that used to be on a certain show. And uh, yeah. they're fantastic people. I just think they were under pressure to perform a little bit. So, well, I've, uh, I've, yeah, mm -hmm. I've, I've been to locations where the um, own, you know, the people running the location have had certain TV shows there, and they said, "Oh, we were a bit concerned because we saw stuff being faked." You know, so yes, mm. yes, yes. Well, we're not naming the show, so no. Just saying, that's I, I'm not saying it. I'm some. From a location yeah. service. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, so here, say, we heard somebody else say and somebody else. Yeah. So, sue us. You know what I mean? Um, right. Where was I, mate? Right. We got through EMF meters and talked. God, we could do a 10-hour show with this list. Yeah. Right here. So, <laughs> I'll try and speed through it. Um, right. Temperature right. gauges. <coughs> right. Uh, I, I don't personally – I don't understand where this thing about temperature thing comes on. When people do baseline tests – Mm -hmm. Absolutely useless. Um, temperatures go fluctuate. Could we live on a on a cooling planet? Um, so yeah, I've never been one for cold spots or that kind of thing. It is, it's in my opinion, my opinion, in my experience, I've never really sort of bought into all that cold spot stuff. Uh, I've you've probably seen some of our old episodes. I might have sort of 
have gone, oh, there's a cold spot here. Oh, yeah. oh. And then a the yeah. medium who I was with said, actually, you're standing right in the footprint of, of uh, a spirit I can sense. So, yeah. go. But me personally, no, I'm, I'm not really down that road. Right. If, if, in my humble opinion, if you are going to go out and get some of this equipment, stay away from laser thermometers, the ones that shoot a laser beam. Because uh -huh. if somebody says they can feel a cold spot, they'll put their hand out. You'll shine your beam into this cold spot, alleged cold spot, and it will shoot straight through it and hit the wall and take the temperature of the wall. Okay. So ignore those. If you're going to try and see what's going on with temperature fluctuations, get an ambient digital thermometer. That's the best thing I'll you can that. do. Try saying that after a few Jack Daniels. That's uh, as he for you. Anyway, ambient. What an ambient Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> no, basically, if if um, if you've got a thermometer in the place and you have got a sudden drop in temperature, and and I'm talking several degrees in the space of minutes, and there's no draft or anything like that, no possible explanation for it, then that's an interesting result. You've got it's no proof of anything, but as with the EMF, if that happens in tandem with something else. It's another tick of the box, isn't it? Yeah. So very good, um, point. very good point. So stay away from the laser ones. They are good fun. They look quite flash when you flash them about in people's eyes, make them see orbs for the rest of the evening. But try and get the ambient ones. They're a lot more, you know, the, the results are that much more credible. All right. Mm. So anything else sound that, Mark? Or you guys listening? No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big, as I said, I'm not a big temperature person, but um, <clears throat> I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. I never, ever, ever do that. Unless we're talking about orbs uh, on camera, um, but no, I would never ever say that. But it's just something I, I personally don't think there's any relevance to. Yeah. Oh, what's yeah, um, sure. What do you as gentlemen think of theatres if they're haunted? Why? Right. First of all, I keep saying this. Uh, I don't think anywhere is haunted. I think it's everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Now, yeah. I'm sticking by that. I think to be a lone voice, I'm sticking by that. If ghosts so, exist, if, you mean? If ghosts, exist, uh, ghosts and spirits, it's everywhere. I've got raw psychics I know who see stuff walking down the street. You don't have to go to an old manor house or an old theatre <clears throat> to find something. Now, the thing is, I work in a 110-year-old theatre, which is a rather beautiful hmm. building. We've done paranormal investigations there uh, with Mandy from Spiral Paranormal um, and picked up some great stuff with Alan, our old late psychic friend. So... Um, yeah, theatre's going to be industry, uh, interesting, but as, as far as I'm concerned, it's no, it's no more haunted than uh, going into your same local, local supermarket that could have been on the site of a Victorian manor. Absolutely. You know, I, so no, I don't buy, I don't like the word haunted, I'm sorry, I, one thing I keep banging on about, I know, and I'm pretty standing really boring, um, but sorry, I've got a bit of a sore throat. Um, but yeah, um, I'm very lucky to live in a, work in a, a very, very beautiful old theatre. I think it depends on the type of phenomena that's going on there, Mark. For instance, um, you know, we, we spoke last week about the several different types of haunting. If, you, if you've got a replay of, of an event, I mean, for instance, when the M6 toll road was being built, some of the workmen reported that they saw Roman soldiers. Now, don't shoot the messenger, but they saw Roman soldiers waist deep walking across the road. I'm not doubting road. it. No, 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 I'm not doubting that at so, all. That's but that is, that is a um, residual type haunting, isn't it? it is, yeah. If you've got a spirit, an intelligent spirit type haunting in that theatre, are they there? Do they visit because they loved the theatre, because they were performing on the stage and it brings back great memories for them? You know. So there is the two types there, the residual type mm -hmm. that is stuck there that is a recording or these intelligent type hauntings because they're going back because they love the theatre. So, well, um, you know, the two psychics I brought into the theatre six years apart, six, although they mm -hmm. do know they did know each other, but they didn't have any information about the theatre. They both pretty much came out with the same stuff. So mm -hmm. I still found one of our best investigations from a psychic point of view because it was yeah. the theatre centenary, and we were, I was doing a ghost tour uh, mm -hmm. with Kieran O'Keefe and uh, Alan, our late medium friend, went round, picked this up, picked that up. And when Mandy was there, she was a film episode, which I'll link somewhere. Um, which I'm about to remaster. She came out with a lot of the same stuff, which I thought was interesting. I mean, she's been there to see pantomime and things like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. But she looked around, no, just us in the building and a couple of other people. It was very, very interesting. Well, well there, there's that other argument, isn't it, Mark? Whether, whether the spirit is, um, whether it's grounded 
Now, I don't know about that one. I mean, I think if there was a spirit that is grounded in a location, he'd be pretty bored after a while, you know, walking around there. Is this in a different ether and different dimension? This is it. This is the thing. We just don't know, do we? No. no. We don't know. Is the spirit there all the time? Is it trapped there, reliving some I kind of tragic it. event? I can't see how something can be trapped somewhere. I don't get my head around that one. Well, we... Where... I don't know. I don't know the rule book, mate. I don't know the, the no, ghost. That's what book. I mean, let's get it. But it's it's a theory, isn't it? Uh, going to take you and other gents to a oh, hole. We going down the rabbit hole, Frank. Is it is possible it that other planets could be haunted from past civilizations? Why not? That's a superb, superb question. Why, why not? not? Yeah, we had. No we've why had why we're on. We've had four in this planet alone. We've had is it three or four mass extinctions. Yeah. Um, Animals we probably don't even know existed because they um, – who knows? Who knows? That's a very, very, very good question. What lives in – what leaves an imprint? What does leave an imprint? You know. And how long does the imprint last? That's the other well, thing. That's that's something like, you know, I've got a theory about that. I have mm. a theory. Like the vapour from a plane. Mm. So people say, you know, it's like, why don't we ever see ghosts of cavemen? You know, or it only seems to be sort of the last sort of 1,500 years, you see. These these things, I think, it, like if they all battlefields are very strong in energy, but that yeah. energy could dissipate over time. If I'd love to, um, there's a big uh, thing going on at the moment about shadow people, which I I don't pay a lot of, lot of uh, mind to because it tends to be corner of the ice sort of phenomena, which I don't I don't really subscribe to that. Um, you see a lot of weird things out the corner of your eye, whether they're paranormal or not. I don't know, but I tend to discount it because your your eyes can play tricks on you. So, yeah, laser grids, it's a cheat tool if you want to use it by all means, but uh, it's a pretty pattern on a wall, basically. That's, that's, that's as much as I'm going to say. What about you, Mark? You hit it on the head. It's a pretty pattern on the wall. Yeah, I've, never, I've never seen anything walk through it. Never seen anything walk through it. I like that. Mark's dissipation theory makes any sense energetically. Thank yes. It's YouTube. true, yeah. Perhaps that explains why we never see ghostly cavemen. Perhaps that's yeah, it, exactly. because the energy has dissipated. I don't know. Maybe the Roman soldiers were seen because it was a particularly traumatic event in the past and it imprinted that much more strongly on that particular, on those surroundings, maybe. I don't know. But like I said, we don't know the rules. We make them up as we go. Yeah. Um, right. Sound recorders. Oh, let's get into... EVPs, please, because this is a favourite of mine. Has anybody Go got anything it. to say on EVPs? What I was inviting reckon? Mandy on to join us a little bit later on, but she's she's got a bit of a hangover lying in her PJs because of a bit of a full-on weekend. So. Shocker. Hangover, oh, Mandy, that's unheard oh, of. Man. You don't, I don't believe it for a minute. Right. <laughs> oh, I love that girl. Right, there is a theory out there. Um, she saw a caveman ghost at Wood Oh, Hole. yes, that's right. Yes, you really? told us. Yeah. I want to hear about that because I've never heard anyone seen cavemen. Was it Captain yeah. Caveman? Captain Caveman. Yeah, very interesting story. Yeah, cool. No, I've never yeah, seen that She's always seeing the ghost. No, no, not fair on the rest of us. We don't see anything. She sees stuff, them. She? All the best stuff. <laughs> right, we're going to have to get her on. You will know this one, oh, yes, which will be on soon. Yeah, something fishy going well, on, Mark. Well, you and, well, you and I, you know. Know. yeah, mm -hmm. right. Anyway, apparently, it's not a good idea Please. to capture EVPs at home. Why? Why not? Why, why is that, that, Rick? Why is that? Tell me why. Tell me Please why. Tell me why. I don't like EVPs. EVP can, no, EVPs can be very interesting, can be very interesting. Right, EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, for those of you not in the know. Okay, we their theory is that spirits can talk to you, and though you can't hear it audibly, we can hear between usually 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. Now, some say that the spirits work in infrasound, which is below 20 hertz. Others say that it works in ultrasound above 20,000 we this is Steve Carlson's territory now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we, we look. I, I just make it sound good, mate. I make most of it up. 
Um, it's true. That's true. They, they are the they are the frequencies we, we hear within. Yeah. So so we can't hear it. Well, some say that these digital voice recorders, if you're using a low level microphone, can pick up maybe infrasound, for instance. And you can ask a question, and although you can't hear the response, when you play back your digital voice recorder, you will hear a response. Now, the TAPS guys used to make a big show of this when they were uh, doing their shows, and um, they would get a lot of EVPs, and they would put on the screen what they thought it said, scrolling across the screen now, before they even gave us a chance to hear for ourselves, which has already put it in your head. That's what you're going to hear. All right, guys? So there's your little... Really? Part. And there's a couple of people on YouTube still do this. Let us make up our own mind. You put, exactly. As Gary just said, you put in that um, that seed in your head, that's it. That's what you're reading, that thing. And it could be absolutely nothing. And it's usually something like, get out. Or oh, something. yeah. Yeah, they're always nasty spirits. It's bad and best. Sorry, guys. And then some of these people have thousands and thousands of people viewing them. And they're influenced by it, but it's yes. wrong. That's not the way to do it. It's not the way no. to do it. Get a capture. Don't run it through every filter that you can find online until it sounds yeah. like a word, okay? If you get something weird, right, I'm going to give you – now, this actually happened, all right? This is true as I'm sitting here. I was listening to a radio show. Now, I used to go on – and I'll be, I'll be honest. I used to go on to a place called Blog Talk Radio – they do loads and loads of different shows about every subject you can possibly think of. You know, well, there was a, a a section where they just concentrated on paranormal stuff. So I was like a moth to a flame. I'm going to go on and listen to this. American, predominantly American, not saying anything about Americans. I've got no nothing against Americans. Oh, anyway, no, no, they're all the time. Well, usually I mean, you know, they're, all the time. They're, they're they're good. They're good. Good value, the Americans. Um, so anyway, I'm on this show and I'm in the chat room and um, they're doing a live broadcast from an old warehouse. They're actually doing an investigation live on this show. And uh, they were doing this where they were, uh, they've got their digital voice recorder. They're asking out for something to happen and then they would play it back instantly so you could see if anything was captured. Well, they're asking out, is anybody there? Give us a sign. Well, they can hear on the recording that they've got on this digital voice recorder, they can hear big band music. They can hear the trumpets playing and the drum. Ding, ding, ding. Now, you can't hear this. You can't hear it other than through this digital voice recorder. And they're, they're freaking out, aren't they? So um, this goes on for about, about half an hour. Now, while this is going on, I'm doing a bit of research in the background here and finding out what is around that local area. Now, Unbeknownst to these guys that are sitting in this warehouse, just across the road is a radio station that plays predominantly, you guessed it, big band music. And this is coming through the digital voice recorder. It's picking it up. All right. So this is what you've got to keep in your mind. Digital voice recorders will pick up all sorts of weird stuff. It will pick up an elephant farting that you didn't hear. Do you know what I mean? Stuff like that, you've got to bear it in mind. That's that's a um, that's an extreme sort of example of it, but it will pick up stuff that you can't. It will pick up infrasound. It will pick up ultrasound if it's that particular type of voice recorder. So don't freak out if something weird does happen. Unlike I did, where I did um, RAF Holton many many moons ago. I don't know if I told you about this, Mark, but um, it's going to carry on. Um, with ultrasound, just before you carry on with this story, because I've always been fascinated by uh, an account cool. with ultrasound. It was interesting. Some people do this. Mm -hmm. Bring if they've got sensitive dogs, take out investigations. I think that can be that can really re give some interesting results. Got sensitive animals, cats even yeah. if they're on the lead. Yeah, take, oh, take your pets out. Investigations. Oh, a lot more than we can. A lot more. Yeah. Than, I mean, they all their senses are much more acutely. Uh, you know, they're going to pick up so much more than we can. Like you say, dogs especially. I mean, we've seen it. Dogs freak me out because they sit and stare into the corner of the room at yeah. nothing. You know, so you're sort of looking, you know, what's going on here? Um, my TV used to pick up my neighbor's Nintendo. How I don't know, because it was in the late 80s and 90s, long before yeah. Wi-Fi. 
Wow. Was <laughs> wow. Maybe the Wi-Fi gone timey-wimey. That's interesting. Wow. That's very true, Mandy. That is very true. They're saying Oh, that, God. Um, the amount of conversations, man, you know I've had about yeah. that. Yeah. 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 That I, I, I used to go from nah to yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> very, very, very interesting. Yeah. And the theory behind that is as we get older, we kind of lose our innocence, don't we? And um, we sort of close ourselves off to it. Well, yeah. I no, it's very true. We get but, uh, the world. Yeah. The mo I'm, trying to, I'm trying to sort of now, as an right old hippie, divorce myself from that kind of stuff. Especially what's been going on the last year and a half, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really with everyone's mind. So, yeah, uh, yeah it, just trying to get meditation in, that kind of thing, some breathing work, you know. And um, you can, to proper breathing work, get, I know, going on another subject now and get some quite sort of psychedelic experiences so um yeah anyway sorry back to your story you, you do yeah. like your altered states of whatever don't you mate it's very you know, interesting it's, it's, so much, I, it's probably something i'm more interested in more than anything it, there's a lot to be said about it and there's more people are opening up to it we'll have um, to do a show about yeah, that mate. Not have to get some of the old um what are they sorry i was just i was reading nigel's thing sorry about that Sorry, you, yeah, we all reading it. Sorry, mate, I lost my thread. <laughs> right we talk about psychedelics, but that's that can be thanked for another show, I think. See, that's, see, that's the thing, Nigel. That just goes to show uh, you just saying a friend living 150 meters from London Radio 4 medium wave transmitter used to get Radio 4 on his landline phone. Oh, so it gosh, just goes to show, doesn't it? Wow, it, on this phone, uh, what his landline yeah. phone, yeah, mental. Yeah. So don't don't put too much stock in in the results you get from these, <laughs> these digital no. voice recorders because they pick up all sorts of weird stuff. N Nigel's very say Nigel I said to earlier knows a lot about audio. He's, he's a bit of an audio super super geek. So yeah. Uh, yeah, he knows his stuff. He knows his stuff. Anyway, that being said, have had some strange instances with digital voice recorders, um, where we did one where I was saying RAF Hompton, which is a uh, nuclear early warning station, you know, the radar mm -hmm. station. Oh, no, yeah. a bunker underground. And uh, as far as we know, only one person had ever died there. A sergeant came in, in uh, a sergeant was there overnight. They came in in the morning and found him slumped over his desk, dead. Uh, anyway, we went down there. We were one of the first teams in there. I was with uh, Phil Wyman. Mm -hmm. Dead Hawking Nights team. Dead Hawking Nights. Yeah, did a lot of them yeah. with them back in the day, yeah. Good fun, good, and, really um, good investigations. Oh, it was, it was great. You know, like I say, we, we had a couple of weird things happen there, but to this day, one in particular was off of a digital voice recorder. We were in the weapons of mass destruction room, which they, they call it that because they've got wow. an old nuclear warhead in there, a decommissioned one, but it's there. And there's NBC suits on the walls and all this sort of stuff. It's all about nuclear war anyway, this room. So pitch black, uh, all the lights are off. We're all stood in a circle, and uh, I've put my digital voice recorder in the corner of the room. Now, I know where everybody else is in that room because we're stood in a circle holding hands. And we're asking now, and we're getting taps, and we're getting bangs. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, we're underground here. There's nobody else about. Anybody that's in this building is in this room. So who's tapping and banging? So, Okay. So I'm trying to rationalise it. And this is going on for 45 minutes. So anyway, we ended the vigil, went up and had a brew. Now, to get from the room we were in back to the surface, we have to walk through a massive long tunnel, go up a set of stairs, and then you're back in the tea room where we was. So I've picked up my digital voice recorder and we're just making our way up the tunnel when I'm chatting away. And I've got it up to me here like this. And I can hear myself calling out in this vigil. Is there anybody here? Can you do something? Blah, 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 blah. And then I hear, Gary. And I went just white as a sheet. And it was somebody up close yeah. to this recorder. Now, I wow. haven't got an explanation for that. And I, <laughs> it makes me go cold just to thinking. Devil's it. Advocate again. It's always mm. like, Gary. It's never, Gary, hi. Oh, no, it was proper Gary. Yeah, that's why I sort of go. Yeah, I'm not doubting it, you know. I, I just wanted to, when they say get out, it's like get out, not get out. Oh mate. no, this oh, was this was designed one. to freak me out, mate. This was, and and this was nobody went near it. That's the thing because it was completely controlled environment. Everybody was in that circle, 
and they were holding hands. So if anybody wow. had broken the hands and gone up to that machine, we'd have known about it and no one went near it. So I don't know. I don't know. I've got not got um, an answer for that. That's interesting. A great story, that. What do you think of interdimensional beings? Um, Frank, we've got a, there's something we're going to do a show on because, especially around the Wiltshire era, I've mentioned this before, so you can't see me. Um, we're going to get my friend Rob on, hopefully, and talk about that. There is people witnessing beings, which goes way beyond spirits and ghosts uh, mm -hmm. around certain areas. Um, they don't talk about it a lot, but I know a lot about what they've told me. I've not experienced it myself. A mm, little bit. Um, but, yeah, that's a whole other um, topic to talk about. Um, yeah. It's we're very, hitting it's on the, um... That also fascinates me more than a lot of other stuff. It's just what's going on around Wiltshire is just one step beyond. We're going to touch on that next week, actually, Frank. Uh, we're going to go more into the uh, the UFO stuff um, yeah. next week. We're going to start off, hopefully. Well, we'll see how we'll see how we go because we do tend to go off on several tangents, as you've noticed. Um, more but we are going to try and hit a few sort of famous UFO cases next week. Look into it a little bit more from uh, a layman's point of view, because once you yeah. go down the rabbit hole with this subject, it is an absolute minefield, isn't it? So. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more next week. Strange but true. Is that with Michael Aspel, Marwood? Marwood with now, from with now. And I said, do you like the, like the like your title? What's your real Strange name? Strange but true. Was, no, no, was that's that one that, with Michael Aspel? That American guy with the freaky voice. Um, Strange but or true. Or I, I might be making that up. I thought it was the Michael Aspel one. I don't know. I'm not sure on that one. Uh, if it's the strange but true, uh, it was it was the American Michael Aspel American was right. Funky voice. Yeah, Michael Aspel, uh, nineteen ninety-seven. Is that is that the strange but true you're talking about, Marwood? Yes. Is that the right? Is that the yes, right it one? Is Mark. Right, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. You're right. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, very good show. There's, the, there's clips on YouTube you can find. Clips on that YouTube. I don't remember, I don't remember that. that. Michael Aspel. Yeah, he's still going strong. Well, he's retired now, but yeah, Michael Aspel. Yeah, know. really good series it was. It, it, but this is before the influx twenty years ago of sort of the new state of paranormal shows. This is when it was more documentary based, uh, oh, and yeah. they just told the story, the interviews, or eyewitnesses. Really well put together it was. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. Mean, I remember Ask Aspel. That's about it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Ask Aspel. Age, yeah. Oh my goodness me! Yes, that takes us back a bit, doesn't it? Miles. <laughs> Yes. yes. Um, uh, so where were you up to now, Mr. 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 Well, so nine o'clock. Have, have we covered EVPs? Have uh, we covered that? Uh, not, we have indeed. I watched one strange, but do one night with a spooky sense about me. What on the news? There was a report that Hindu statues were drinking milk. Yes, that almost I, remember that. That. <laughs> I do remember that. Yeah. Wow. Yes, I, w I watched something on YouTube quite recently over that. Actually, they were drinking milk. Hmm. Yeah. Right, so we've covered EMF meters, torches, thermometers, laser grids, and sound recorders. Have any of you guys got anything else to say about EVPs? Or maybe you've got one you've captured and you want us to listen to it? We will listen to it with an open mind. We're not just yeah. poo-pooing on all I of mean, it. I mean, I'm, very, I'm a big Most fan of EVP. I'm a big fan of EVP. I think it'd be, I'd like, I'd like to do a little bit more on that. I haven't done enough on that. Um, yeah, well, if, if, you, if, you, if you can capture an EVP that gives you a specific piece of information, in response to a question, you know, what are next week's lottery numbers? And it reels off, you know, so that's stupid. But, um, you know, something like that. Not, is there somebody here and you hear elephant? Oh, we've got somebody here riding an elephant. You know, so it's just, yeah, be sensible. You know, if you've got something you want us to listen to and you want to send it through to us, I think we figured out now how to use this technology, Mark, where we can actually yeah, play right, yeah. you know, live. That's cool. So, yeah, we'll have a listen to it. Thank we'll you, to you Mr. Richard Suggett, for his, uh, his advice. Um, we could, as with EVP, is slightly related in a way, is mm -hmm. the good old spirit box, ghost <laughs> box, Frank's box, whatever you want to call them. Uh, what, what, what's your take on them, Mr. Brown? Um, <laughs> yeah, everyone knows what I think. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Wrong hole. Right. 
Spirits Box, Ghost Box, Frank Box, the Radio Shack Hack. One that one made the damn racket. <laughs> <coughs> Give me a minute. Right. Oh, that really did go down the wrong hole, that bit. Yeah, that <laughs> I bit. have to make me laugh or something. Right. Serious now, professional. Okay. Now, I didn't know a lot about these. I heard about them. Still going down the wrong hole. What's going on? Um, yeah, because Frank they came in after we, so, well, I would say our highlight, but our, our sort of glory days. Um, yes. They came in in the last sort of <clears throat> eight, nine years, didn't they, really? Yeah, and I, I did use them. I did use them, and, and there was one time out of many that we had something interesting happen. Now, basically, the the theory, guys, if you've not used them or you've not heard of them, that if, if you imagine you're sat in your car and you press scan on your car stereo, it will scan through the band until it picks up a strong signal, then it will stick to it, okay, and it will stop on that band. Well, the ghost boxes don't. They carry on scanning up and down, up and down the bands. Theory is that the spirits can communicate with us through the white noise in the background. And it is something that goes back a long, long way. You know, oh, they, yeah, I'm not looking white noise at all. That's very interesting. I'm not looking white noise at all. <clears throat> white noise as a source of spirit communication goes back quite a while. And you can do it with an old transistor radio. I don't, need, I don't know why you need to pay out a ton of money on a ghost box when you can just put your TV on a station that isn't tuned in Use it that way, buy an old radio and don't tune it in properly. You've got loads of white noise to play with. So if that's your bag, do it like that. Don't go and pay 70, 80, 90, 100 and odd quid for a ghost box that just scans up and down, up and down. And every now and again, you'll get a little snippet from a DJ, which you will jump on and think it's a spirit communicating with you. It ain't, all right? A lot of time, not saying for every single time, but a lot of the times, every single time, it. Out, every single time, it's the wrong, it's the wrong equipment for measuring white noise. Yeah, it is completely. Not enough, you know, I don't think there's enough gap. There's not enough gap to really analyze it logistically. No, no you're uh, you're going to get on a station for about a second, a second, yeah. two seconds maybe. So, um, and it makes such a racket. Oh, excuse me. It makes it's such awful. a racket. It's. Um, it did, Nigel, definitely. I've, I've um, <laughs> this happened before, right? You won't believe this for a minute, but this happened before. I was going on a rant about a very famous medium. And I you was had really a rant, caring. not at all. I had a rant online about a very famous medium. We're doing a whole and, show um, about some of the mediums before long, don't worry. <coughs> I've got a lot of friends that are mediums, Same so here. I've got to be careful on that one. But yeah. they, know, they know how I feel about it, so it's cool. Um, so anyway, I'm going to town on this particular medium. That night we had an earthquake. <laughs> my first thought was not, oh my god, we're having an earthquake. My first ever is like, oh, perhaps I shouldn't have said that about him. <laughs> He's going back and getting me or something like that. But um, yes, that's that's probably what happened. It's uh, it's some kind of spirit that's causing me to choke. Uh, I have an excellent flexi disc, the unexplained voices of the oh, dead. dead. Featuring white, white noise recordings. Uh, I'd like to Nineteen seventy. Oh, I'm far too young to remember nineteen seventy, Rick. Hey. <coughs> yeah, I'm very, very small. I was very small. I wasn't well, even born nineteen seventy. Thank you. Well, yes, you were. Until, hold on. Not until not until the thirtieth of December. I wasn't. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Uh, I love you. It's still in the same year, but you're just, just pushing it, pushing the goalposts a little bit there. Love that. Well, I wouldn't know much about it, would I? No, no, no. Me. Right, anyway, so uh, that's sound recorders. We, we've covered that, haven't we? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of losing the plot here. Right. Okay, so sound recorders, EVPs, etc. Use your loaf. Um, look at the results critically. Don't think that every sound you, you hear that isn't your voice is a ghost because it's going to pick up a lot of stuff environmentally that you can't pick up with your own hearing, okay? So bear that in mind. Right, cameras. And when I say cameras, I'm talking about still photography cameras, not video cameras. Me being Mr. Video Man, yeah. 
which brings us into the realm of orbs, which we've already talked about a little bit, but it is something that people are making a big deal about. Still, even though it's been explained and the camera companies have come out and said, it ain't ghost, it's dust. It's it's unbelievable. There's people out there still who've been doing this for a long time, still saying orbs are ghosts on their camera. I, I, I'm, I'm almost astonished that they haven't yes. read, have no point, no, nope, they're spirit, end of. Yeah. I, I give I sort of give up a little what bit. Do do? And then right, but they right. influence the people who are watching. So the people who are watching their shows think, oh, well, that must be how you see a spirit. You know, it's all about how many people are watching your channel. That's all you can influence, isn't it? Yeah. And a lot of it is common. It is it is common sense because um we get we get sent a lot of photos. People that find out are a little bit strange and we like this weird sort of stuff. They send us lots of photos to review. And um, what they don't tell us is that that ghostly mist that they've captured on camera is the guy stood next to him smoking a cigarette and blowing out. It tells us, do you know what I mean? There's someone stood next to them breathing out, and it's about minus two out. It was raining. There was, like, water droplets in the air. It was foggy, blah, 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 which is all being picked up on these cameras. So what we're trying to say is... um, Exactly, Richard, yeah. Given it's possible to make an orb appear manually, it surely means orbs are not anything. Right. Now, we've got to practice what we preach there, Richard. We can't say that every orb that's ever been captured on camera is dust or moisture or skin or clothing fibres. I would. But I would most... my neck, say I would. <laughs> well, no, because that I, makes you I know, say I know I should, I should have the get out of jail card. Really, saying, well, 99.9%. But the evidence suggests no. I will say hundred percent. I'm gonna stick. Sorry, I'm gonna have to stick my neck out on on that one on a limb and say I say one hundred percent. I'm talking about cameras only. Yeah, but that's like me saying that every ghost that's ever been captured on camera is uh, environmental or it's uh, a glitch in the technology or something like that or a light mm. anomaly. That's similar to me saying that. So seeing as I've not been privy to look at every single orb photo that's ever been taken in the history of mankind, I can't say that every orb photo is dust. But as I said earlier, if it's captured on the 35 millimetre film, it's a little bit more credible than this digital photography. I've got orbs on 35 millimetre. Yeah, I've got a few. Which well, I only know more credible. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it's yeah. spirits, but it's a lot more credible than than a piece of equipment that we have been told that dust plays with that technology. You know, it confuses the chip and it shows up as these big fuzzy balls that people are seeing faces in and pixies oh, and yeah. fairies and angels. Day, and, oh, everyone can see. I've had a couple of psychics. You know, my dear friend Alan. Um, he will say to me, "Can't you see the face there?" I think, no, I can't see any face in it at all. I can see, actually, I can see a fire engine if I want to, or I can see a cat. You know, we're, we're pattern seeking mammals. Um, we'll this find whatever is, you want to see. That's the problem. This is it. It is all open to interpretation, interpretation mm. and how somebody perceives something. Now, I'm not trying to sit here and dictate to you guys how to do a paranormal investigation. What I'm saying to you is, Please don't believe everything you see on TV. Don't believe everything you're reading in in an article online. Use a bit of common sense, all right? If you are using the equipment, use it sensibly. Use it as a tool. Use it as a guide. Don't think that because I've got an EMF spike and all our phones are switched off and there's nothing in the room that's generating electricity, that it's not a ghost. It very well could be. But don't take that as gospel that it is. The best tool you will ever have are your own senses. All right? Yeah. Trust them. And if you see something, walk through the wall, wave at you, and carry on and walk through the other wall. What more proof do you need? Okay? So Gary, You uh, hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail on the head. The best bit of equipment is us, is you, yeah. is your senses. Don't, don't cost you nothing. Although your senses can be confused yes you know, yes sight especially can be confused your hearing can be confused but um you'll know when it happens there will mm. be no ambiguity about it and it will be a slam dunk i've seen and experienced something paranormal so mm. yeah trust my that. local 
My local pub hired a psychic one night. Two hours on in, one bloke sits on the table with him, spills a whole pint over him. Another bloke shouts, you didn't see that coming, did you? The guy walked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. Cool. Right, where do we get to? Camera? Uh... Oh, it's 10 past nine. We're doing good. We're doing good. Uh, do you know, I'm only about six items in on my list here. We can do part two next week. It's all right. Oh, I wouldn't wish that on you. Right, DVR, digital vi digital video recorders. Same again. You're going to pick up the weird stuff on it, the insects, um, all these things under intelligent control, apparently. Just stuff wafting about on the breeze. You'll I'm do coming it. Straight back. I'm coming straight back. Carry on, Rick. Carry on. All right, okay, I'll carry on. All right, yeah, carry on. You're doing good. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> right, do the experiment yourself. After the show is finished, of course, grab your cameras on your phones. Um, if you've got a, another camera that's got video function on it, do that. Or if you've got a video recorder, digital video recorder, try it. Turn all the lights off and uh, put it on the night vision mode. And you'll see all this sort of stuff that I'm talking about. You have basically got a torch coming out of this camera. And it is coming out but it's coming out with um, infrared light. Now, that is still going to bounce off dust, clothing fibers, skin, insects, all that kind of stuff, all right? Just because you can't see it with your naked eye, it's going to show up and it's going to glow, all right? You will see it. It will definitely happen. Try it. And um, there's a man that will tell you all about that sort of thing, Darren. Um, good friend of mine, investigated with him, um, did the radio shows with him for a lot of years. So right, I'm just what having a rant doing? about equipment, Darren. You ain't missed much, but it's just same old, same old me moaning. Um, so yeah, try it. Don't just take my word for it, guys. Uh, as I say, turn the lights off, stick your cameras on and see what sort of stuff you'll pick up. And it, it might surprise you. Mm, yeah. Uh, uh, forward looking infrared cameras. I'm not going to talk a lot about that because that's a show in itself. Learn how to use them. If you've got the money to go and buy one, learn how to use it and learn to check your results because the results that you are seeing on TV ain't nothing special. They are no. just completely misidentifying what is going on with that particular camera, all right? So if you're going to use one, learn how to use it properly. That's all I will say to you. And take take them off manual set. Take them off automatic. And put it, try and work out manual settings. Get yes. to learn. I'm being a filmmaker here, dear, but get to learn your manual settings. Yeah, so it's great right. to have it on automatic, and it does work a lot. They're so good now, and the stuff you can get on your mobile phones are incredible. Some of the quality it's, better than the, the, the DSLR. Yeah. It is a good bit of kit, but uh, learn how to use it properly before you start jumping up and down about the results you get. Mm. Um, yeah, here's one for you guys. I want to know what you lot think about this. Uh, Ouija boards. Don't get me started. No, I want to get you started. I want to no, get, get you started. I want to get you started. I want to get you started. Oh, right. Ouija boards or Ouija boards or Ouija or Luigi boards, which must have been an Italian one. Um, that's what we want to talk about. Now, for those of you that don't know, and I'm sure that you all do know, this is a piece of board with letters and numbers on it, with yes and no written on it, uh, hello and goodbye. It comes in many, many guises. Ouija, or Ouija, is actually a brand name. But they are called spirit boards, talking boards, all that's angel boards, whatever. But they all basically do the same thing. It is a form of divination, which is opening up a channel to talk to a spirit. Now, they didn't actually have a bad rep. It's a Victorian parlour game. Didn't have TVs back in those days, so they would all sit around the table and they would tell each other's fortunes with these Ouija boards. Now, they didn't get the name Ouija boards till the late 1900s. Um, sorry, late 1800s. And uh, a guy called William Ford took over production. And you can still buy them in Toys R Us in America, I believe. I don't know about this country, but you can get a little pink one for little girls in a case. And um, Waddington, there you go, put out a Ouija board. Now, there are people that won't even hold one. They won't. They certainly won't have one in their house. They won't use them. Well, can I think that, the, the, rep, the reputation they've got now, I think it was on the back of The Exorcist when that came out in yeah. 1973. 
they, that's right. I don't know how what the connection was, but that's where the the negative thing um, reputation they've got came from, if I'm not mistaken. Well, she in the film, she was in the uh, the basement on the Ouija board talking to Captain Howdy, yeah. right? Yeah. And it kind of freaked everybody out. And if you go back to the case that I was talking about last week, the real story behind the Exorcist, that young lad was using the Ouija board with his aunt. And, and they're saying that, you know, this sort of thing is opening up a portal. It's opening up this channel for these things to come through. And if you don't shut it down properly, these nasty, they're always nasty entities are going to follow you home. Um, problem is, if you are, right, divination. It doesn't matter if you're standing in a room calling out, for spirits to come and talk to you or if you're using a glass on a table spinning it around on a table or if you're using a crystal or whatever you're doing exactly the same thing all right exactly. you're inviting a spirit to come and speak to you so a spirit board or a ouija board is absolutely no different absolutely no different no different no different you're right, you're using my dowsing rods no different exactly. using my dowsing rods Exactly the same thing, you know. So it's there. a piece of card. It's a piece of board with letters and numbers on it. That is it. Yeah. It's not something that's mass produced, and um, well, it is mass produced, but it's not. It's nothing special. It's a. It's just letters and numbers, you know. I get people so, absolutely terrified of them. I just find you really shouldn't be investigating the paranormal, really. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, if, if you don't want to open up a channel to talk to spirits, then don't do it at all. Don't yeah. say I'm not going to use a spirit ball, then stand in the building and say, come and do something, come and talk to me, because you're doing the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Right? Anyway, so that's that's Ouija ball. But, um, and also, one thing to add, when we used to do investigations, you remember, guys, and I think Mandy will remember, we, we, did, we have used them. I was never a yes. big fan. Yes. Uh, but you know, you're out investigating, don't do what I want to do, everyone's happy with. But we would yep. always do the, the not with our fingers on that. Oh, can't really see it from here. I'll turn that down. Mm -hmm. We always have our nails on the on the board, you know, or if we're using glass divination, always nails only. It's very hard to push a, a glass on a board with just your nail. Oh, God, it's gone red. How cool is that? I paranormal. Know. Oh, it's, haunted. it's demonic. Has it gone demonic? It's because we I'm were talking about them, Mark. You can't talk about them and not expect stuff to happen, mate. It's gone <laughs> yellow now. <laughs> It was white just a minute. What, what are you doing here? What's going on? <laughs> I've gone fucking green. No, we, usually a spirit, a, a Ouija board or Ouija board is used in, in uh, conjunction with a planchette. It's basically a little triangle with a hole in it and you put your finger on it and it moves around and wherever the hole is, is the letter of the answer you're getting. It can be used with a, um, a glass as well or a pointer of some kind. But as Mark said, you know, if if it is start if you're if you're in a group of people, usually about five or six people, um and it's flying around the board and you start thinking, hang on a minute, I'm sure he's pushing that. Just like Mark said, just stop everybody and say, right, can everybody just turn their fingers over so that it's their nail? And you've got, got that from right from the beginning. We don't even start on it's always now straight away. If you remember Stammer yeah. House, they did it. Whiteworth Museum of Transport, we did some interesting, and you know, we got some interesting results. Well, I'm a bit skeptical about the whole Ouija. We got some very interesting results on that one, which you find remarked on my YouTube channel. Do Ouija balls actually work? I would say probably not. I think there's a human influence there, unintentionally, unintentionally. Um, well, you've, but... you've got, you've got, is it three possibilities that, um... okay, so you're all sat around your table doing your Doris Stokes bit and you've got your Ouija board on the table and you've got the little light in the middle and you're all sat there. Is there anybody there? And this starts moving. Okay. So the first possibility is that the spirit is moving this thing and it's spelling out where the husband's life insurance policy is hidden and all that sort of stuff. Or you've got something that is called the idiomotor effect which yeah. is unconscious muscle movements of the planchette or the glass. You're moving it, but you don't realize you're moving it, okay? 
And then you've got the third possibility, which is somebody is mucking around yes, we and they're messing with you and they're, they're just trying to freak you out. All right. So, and you're never going to know if you've, and if you say to somebody, look, I think you're moving it, take your finger off. It's going to cause all sorts of arguments. So I wouldn't pay much, too much attention to it, put too much stock into mm. it. But as I said with the other things, you know, if you come out with a, a piece of information that nobody could possibly have known, that makes it a little bit more interesting. Mm. But I've got to say, guys, I have used these, and this is no exaggeration, literally hundreds upon hundreds of times. I used to do these two or three a week for years, these investigations. And basically, we were trying to give the general public a snapshot of what a paranormal investigation entailed, which was using a Ouija board. We wanted to give them all aspects. So it was using this equipment that I don't like, using Ouija boards, which I don't like, that sort of thing. And I've seen them used, and I've had my finger on them, and nothing has ever convinced me that spirits can talk to you through a Ouija board. Just my opinion. Sorry. Okay. I mean, bear so, in mind, um, as Darren did point, the two I when it has worked for us was Sta uh, Stammer Manor down in Brighton, which is one of our yeah. episodes with, with Darren, and mm -hmm. White Museum of Transport. But mm -hmm. there's nothing to say that we were contacting a spirit. It could have been our own energy being built up. You know, I'm now going down a different route, but there's nothing to say that we, we'll, although we're getting answers to the questions, I'm always skeptical about the answers, you know. Um, but yeah, we saw a glass movement, it was just nails only. And he went, I'll try and find that clip and I'll, I'll post it next week. Right. Devil's advocate again, Mark. You can still push the glass with your nail on it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If Absolutely. You caught, Absolutely. If you get it caught in that, is it called the cuticle bit at the top mm -hmm. there? You get that resting on the top of your glass. You're going to push it with that, all right? So it can still happen. You, you've got to be able to trust the people that you're doing it with 100% that nobody's going to muck around, and it's got to come out with a piece of information that is checkable that nobody could possibly have known hmm. for that That's to impress only one place. That's more on a psychic route, and that was the Checkers Inn in hmm. Seven Oaks, where all the, the history of the pub, which uh, Medium and Mandy was very good at, was picked mm -hmm. up. Um, by Anne Valhood um, was picked up, was actually in a folder, wasn't on the internet, but it was locked away in a folder underneath the, the bar, you know, the history of the place. So very, very interesting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm not saying you, you don't come off. You don't come up with these um, <laughs> these, these weird about. results. It's about no, it house. wasn't, Darren. So now, yeah. now, 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 you old <laughs> UKPN <laughs> radio know, I weren't there, mate, so I can't say. I'm just saying it is possible that uh, if somebody is that way inclined, they can turn their finger over and still move it. Mm. Right. Do you remember the 90s Halloween live show Ghost Watch? Oh, it's classic. Absolute classic. Yeah, Philip Schofield, wasn't it? That one? Wasn't no, it? no, it was. It was um, oh, my goodness. Oh, it's a big horror about it. Yeah. <clears throat> Never been repeated. Very good. Yeah. No, it sounds like I'm dumping on everything, Darren. I'm sorry, mate. I don't mean to sound like that. Usually me. I, <laughs> I, I've just got to say, from my experience, I've had nothing come through on a Ouija board that has, that has impressed me. So Sarah Green, yeah, that was it. That was it, yeah. It, 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 it was a good show. I mean, if if uh, if you fell for it, which I think I did at the time, I was like, hang on, what's going on? And then um, when it really started kicking off, I was like, hang on a minute, no, something weird's yeah. going on. But yeah, it was pretty cool, that. Right. Where were we? Ouija boards, uh, glass divination we've kind of covered, haven't we, yeah. as part of Ouija boards. It's a similar sort of thing where you can um, put a glass on the table, have yes written one side, no written the other, and get the glass to move side to side. Same sort of thing. Uh, crystal. Have you done crystal divination, Mark? Yes, don't put much into it, uh, but a lot of people do, which is fine. It's no different to me dowsing. It's no different to me dowsing. You know, quartz crystals got contain um, silica and energy. Um, I'm not really going down the crystal route. It's not really my thing. So I can't really say too much about it because of lack of knowledge, really. Um, a lot of people say there's energy in, crystal, in some, a lot of the crystals. Some say there's not. I've, I've not done enough with it, to be honest. Well, I find it interesting that people have got um, – it's basically a crystal on a bit of string, 
and it, it's over over a, a piece of paper that's got yes, no, maybe, I don't know, that kind of stuff written on it. And they're, they're sitting there with it. If they, this is the table, their elbow's on the table, and they've got this crystal like this on a piece of string. And it's over this piece of paper. And sometimes the crystal goes anti-clockwise. Sometimes it goes clockwise. And other times it swings backwards and forwards. That's no different to dowsing. I've done crystal dowsing, which is a slightly, sort of the same thing as you're saying. I've done crystal dowsing with very good results. Um, they're my primary choice is my dowsing rods. I've had yeah. for 26 years, I think. Yeah. So, but yeah, no different. Crystal dowsing, dowsing with rods. Same thing. thing is, Mark, are, are you going to be able to hold your arm still on a table holding a crystal on a piece of string with a pulse, a strong pulse in that arm and keep it absolutely It's very still? difficult. It's very difficult. That's why I don't really like to do, do it that much. I'm more good old rods. Um, and I also hold my jousting rods upside down, which not many people do, because you've got less mm. likely, especially if you're outside and it's a bit windy. Although if it's windy, I don't I wouldn't douse in wind anyway. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's it is as you quite rightly say, it is very hard to keep it sturdy when you've got the muscle problem. And you've got the ideomotor effect again when it does yes. start moving. Are you subconsciously gonna Move it but a little bit more. Can I just say, I don't know. I'm coming from a person who does for many, many years. I know the, yeah. I can make the, the, the crystal, uh, I'll film it one day and go round and round and round and I can stop it without even to, uh, and make it go back the other way. I can make it stop, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I can, on instruction, I can I can actually influence the, the crystal. Is that psychological though? Just no. ask. Money asking. We're going into a whole different conversation now, I think, with uh, hmm. intent, what I call in intent. Well, something we'll have to cover in another show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, look, yeah I'm not saying it was. I'm just asking the question, mate. That was all. You know, was no, it, no, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll have to film it for you. I'll have to film yeah. it for you. I've yeah. had my dad was going around like a helicopter before, you know, and then I stop. I've got mm -hmm. a video of that. I'll, I'll sort that out. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? You, you all say it was Michael Parkinson and Sarah Gunn. I remember it. Yeah, and um, oh my God, what was the other chap? I think he died recently, didn't he? Um, Mike Reed. No, no, Mike no. Smith. Uh, Mike Smith. Thank you, Mike, Mike Smith. It was a while ago, wasn't it? I mean, this was back in the nineties, was it? Was it eighties, nineties, or ninety-two? Something like that time. I don't know. Long time. Thirty years ago. I mean, the 90s, you don't think it sounds that long ago after the 1990s. 30 years ago was 1991. Thanks for that. Cheers, mate. Yeah. I thought you was a mate. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be going blind doing that with your rods, Mark. Probably would, actually, Dad. Uh, Gary, uh, Darren. Mm. I mean, I'll get for everyone's name. Yeah. Right, we've got to... Um, I've got to talk about haunted dolls. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Do we have to? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and make a bacon sandwich. <laughs> no, I know. Um, I know some people that take a haunted doll to their events. Really? Each to their own. Each to their own. They Each buy them own. online. They are for sale online. You can get them on eBay. I'm not sure how much they cost, but I can't imagine they're cheap. And they are haunted dolls. Apparently, they have got a spirit attached to them. And um, I'm out of this conversation. <laughs> God. Oh, I'm, trying, God. I'm trying to be nice. You're doing very well, sir. You're doing very well. Go on, let rip. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> they, they. Oh, see you later, Nigel. Thanks for, thanks for Nigel. Watching, mate. It's been nice Thank to you, buddy. Saved by the bell there. Um, yeah, that's haunted dolls. That's covered haunted dolls for you. Um, if if you want to read a little bit more about haunted dolls, you got the famous Annabelle doll that was Ed and Lorraine Warren. Oh, I'm being so nice tonight. Yeah, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Um, you've seen the films, Annabelle. No, Darren. He used to do this to me. He used to try and set me up. Do you know he would deliberately mention the D word just to set me off, right? 
and get me in trouble on other shows. No, so I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. He knows yeah, what he's uh, doing. Your own. Yeah, only top hey, top. That's yep. my aunt Rose. She'll say it how it is. That's... I love that. The, the apple don't fall far the from the tree, Rose. That's, you know what I mean? <laughs> you can't go wrong on the road, bollocks, can you really? Um... <laughs> Right, well, today it's half past nine. I thought we'll we'll start wrapping up in a minute. I love my aunt. It's been, it's been fascinating. Thank you, Rose. Oh, your aunt. Oh, she's great. Yeah. Anyway, right. So anyway, we we I've got a list. I've got this massive list of equipment that they're using. We we we'll go through the rest of it on another show. But let before we do go, and you want to, if, if someone's you want to happy, happy, we'll hang on a little bit later. We'll hang on a bit later. I know. I'm I'm not fussed. I, I just no, want to say you good. guys. If you are starting out and you are doing paranormal investigations or you're thinking about doing it, save your money. You don't need all this crap. Uh, don't need all this equipment, right? Because it is so open to outside influences that at some point you will have a little suitcase full of this stuff and you'll have brilliant results, but you'll be thinking, yeah, but that could have been this and that could have been that. So I can't really trust the results anyway. And I've wasted all my bloody money. So, do it old school, which won't cost you hardly a penny. You can do the trigger object. Get a piece of paper, a bit of A4 paper, get some old coins, draw around them, okay? Leave them in a location. Lock that particular room off. You've made sure that nobody else can go in there. If you go back an half an hour later or an hour later and those coins have moved, and I'm not talking about a little bit because you've got to take into consideration seismic tremors which happen all the time um so light that you can't actually feel it yourself but it can vibrate objects traffic lorries going past outside can vibrate these objects if you've got a coin that you've drawn over here and it's now over there that's something to get excited about not going to cost you a penny to do that you can do it with coins you can do it with crucifixes you can do it with toy cars or dolls if you think there's a child spirit in that particular location something like that um i've got results bells. Doing. yeah bells is another one they used to do this used to be a favorite of the fox sisters doris stokes they would have a bell ting 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 you know if that would ring frank I'm looking at equipment helps. No, uh, no, I'm no, not saying it doesn't, doesn't Frank. I'm saying I'm not. I'm not dumping on all equipment. I'm saying that people are misinterpreting the results they are getting from equipment. They're That's not really looking important. at it objectively. It's really important to stress that. Yes, I'm not dumping on it and saying it's a load of crap. Um, it is overpriced crap, but it is stuff that if you can look at it objectively and see that it is open to outside influences then it can't be as relied on as the TV shows make it out, okay? I hope that clears that up. All right, mm. brilliant. Right, so, but this other stuff isn't open to ambiguity. Trigger objects, if you can lock off that room and prove that nobody has been in there and that trigger object has moved by quite a significant distance, brilliant result. Same as bells. Um, as I say, Doris Stokes, the Fox sisters used bells in their little, um, when they were doing their little seances and things like Not that. Not modern investigators, I don't even know who these people are. That's the problem also. <laughs> I wonder, if they're on YouTube with their demons, they probably want to know who these people are. No, it's probably not. Like but uh, it's, it's all stuff you guys can, you you know, you can look at yourself on YouTube. There are videos about these people, the Fox sisters, Doris Stokes, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, flower on the floor. You know, dusting the yeah. flower on the floor. If you lock that yeah, room yeah. off and you come back an hour later and there's a footprint in that flower, you are sure no one's been in there. That's an interesting result again. And it's not open to exterior factors. You know, you can say, I know nobody's been in that room, so where the bloody hell did that footprint come from? Okay, that sort of stuff. Um, throwing balls around. Mm. Chuck a ball down a corridor in the pitch blank. You know no one's down there. That ball comes flying back. It's going to freak you out, but it's going to be cool. All right? yeah. I like that. it. That's quite good fun, that, actually. Yeah. yeah. 
EVP, you're a bit late for EVP, Darren. We we covered that, babe. We covered that. Yeah, yeah. Where were you, mate? Yeah, we covered EVPs. <laughs> when objects move caused by mini earthquakes, Gaz. Yes, we have got thousands of earthquakes happening all the time, every day, Frank. And um, traffic, you wouldn't believe just by vibration of traffic, how much mo it moves objects. There was a, I think, a museum in London where this particular um, statue was on a glass case and on time lapse, it was spinning. This one statue, wow. the others, the others were all set perfectly still, but one statue was actually spinning over a period of time. And they actually figured out that it wasn't perfectly flat and it was the traffic outside that was causing, you know, this thing to actually spin. So things to take into account. I was on my Xbox with G. Oh, that's a pitiful excuse, Darren. But um, I don't blame you, mate. I would be as well. Um, right. So haunted dolls we've covered. Motion sensors, they are what they are. You can use them. I've got a funny story about that. I'll tell you another time. Um, but basically, we set up motion sensors in doorways, stairs, that sort of thing. If something's going to walk through it, it's going to set off a siren. Not much more to be said than that. No. Um, REM pods. Yeah. Uh, REM pods give out a low EM field, electromagnetic field, and anything that interacts with that field, it will set off an alarm and loads of flashy, flashy lights and make everybody jump. And they do go off quite often. Well, here's something we're not covering, something, something very interesting that Daz has been talk, uh, talking about here with um, light sensors, REM pods. It's got to then say that if it's a ghost going through, not so much spirit, because that's, that's something else, but if ghost is going through, that ghost has got to have some sort of mass yes. for it to trigger it. Yes. Which I think is really important. If someone sees a ghost, I mean, you, it takes photons of light to see that ghost. So that ghost has got to have mass, which goes against what a ghost should be. Yeah. Can you in, order for, in order for our eyes to see that ghost, it has got to have the ability to have the light hit it, reflect mm. off it, and bounce into our eye, unless it is emitting its own light no, source. Darling. Yeah. We don't know. I don't, as I say, I don't know the answer to that one, but um, you just <laughs> thought. Can the camera set them off? Yeah, probably could. <laughs> I'd imagine so, mate. Anything with electric current running through it sh should, in theory, interfere with the EM field that they are producing. Mm. There's EMF pretty much everywhere, isn't there? You know. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, ghost box we've covered. Oh, here's one that will make you laugh. The Ovilus. Go on. Who's used an Ovilus? No. Oh, what? Oh, what's an? Oh, I know the name. What's that, what are they? The Ovilus. It's it's a piece of equipment that has got a load of words stored into it. Oh and God, that piece of nonsense. Yeah, yeah. It's got it's got a built-in EMF meter, and depending on the level of EMF that's picked up by that particular meter, depends on what word is given out. So if you program that particular <laughs> machine, yeah, Darren, it's one of the ridiculous things. Oh, that's why I do public events. Is what you're gonna to have to do? <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, I need to get these people on the show, Darren and Mandy. I love you a bit. It's brilliant. Oh man, they're about they're all gonna get. Come on, Darren, I want to get you back on. Get back into yeah, doing Darren. This. Tell me what you no, really yeah, think. Tell your weightlifting. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> tell us what you really think. Um, it it will uh, it will give out a specific word, but if you actually program this thing with fifty ghost words, it's gonna come out with ghost words, isn't it? Yeah, but the funny, the funniest thing I ever heard was a guy that was doing a radio show, and he was it was all about the Ovilus, and uh, he's doing it live on air. This thing. <laughs> and uh, he says, uh, "Is anybody here with me?" And he says, "Upstairs." And it's this computerized voice upstairs. Are you upstairs? Window. You are looking at me through the window. Highway. You died on the highway. Was it an accident? Car. You was in a car and you died. It's like Jack and Ori. This guy oh. is making a story <laughs> depending on what came through this buddy of his. Bullshit. 
Didn't say I'm that. Not, okay. I'm not much dealing with them, thank, thank goodness. So Talking about with Darren, I wish Darren lived a bit closer because I, I said to him once before I'd, I'd have hired him to sort of beef me up a little bit. I wish he lived yeah, a this, bit closer. This, this, I'm, I'm trying to be balanced on my opinion, but save your money when it comes to that, you know. So. Yeah. There is no bit of equipment really has been designed to detect ghosts and spirits, no, really. None of it. It's all used no. for, they've been adapted, but they're, they're used to the things used for, by engineers, you know, yeah. um, EMF readers, that kind of thing. Though nothing's actually been designed for, I hate my, sorry, I'm going to use a word, I, a phrase I never use, ghost hunting. Um I say paranormal investigations. I don't like the word ghost hunting either. Oh, I cringe every time I hear that. I, I've got I've got a few other bits on my list here, but look, I, I, is everyone fill, can, fill your boots, mate? This is this is fun. I don't need to, mate, because what I'm going to say to you, go on. If you're just starting off with this, if you're starting off doing investigations, to start with, stay away from anything that's electronic because it can give you so many false readings and it will confuse you. Okay. So Very try and go, time. try and go old school if you can. Just go in armed with a torch, just to see where you're going, and a notepad. That's all you need, all right. And see what you pick up. If you pick up, if you go in there armed to the teeth, like Batman with a utility belt with all these gadgets on it, you are going to get so many confusing results and so much data. All right, you are going to put it online, and people are going to say, "Oh, it's demonic." It's Ooh. that's definitely a ghost. I saw a face in that particular orb or whatever. Darren, exactly right. Go analog. Very go good old point. school. Very good. Yeah. Analog. Research. Research Harry Price. Okay. He is known as the like the grandfather of investigations, and he did it back in the day with with just really rudimentary equipment. So I would do that personally. Save you money, guys. All right. Very good. Very good. Yeah, legend. Okay, so that, that pretty much covers equipment. <laughs> oh, I didn't yeah. burst a blood vessel or anything. I'm, I must be getting good, mate, I tell you. <laughs> I mean, we, when we've done investigations, really, we have very little equipment, very little yeah. equipment. You know, um, I go in. Um, I, I The way I used to do it, it's like once I've come with you to film the episodes, which if we do start it all up again, it will be much mm. more going, here we go, raw, raw, raw. Um, and I just follow the action. I just follow the action. I don't dictate where people should go or anything. Just follow the action. Um, that's the best way. So, but we're. I, I, think, like, um, yeah. I think it's important that if you are investigating in a group, you need to be at that level with people where you can say, "I think that's bullshit." Everyone's jumping up and down, and they are oh, freaking out. And you, you got to be at that level where you can say, "Look." You've got to take into account that that could have been this, that could have been that. Not just jump on and, and agree with the hype and you this this massive thing goes on where everybody's jumping up and down and because you've caught something paranormal. You you've got to sometimes be the voice arena, and not be afraid to voice that. That come on, guys, you know you've got to think that could have been this, that could have been that. And I think there is this. Um, this mass hysteria thing that's going on at the moment where the, the groups go in and they all, they all jump on board with it. And, and there, there's no sort of critical thinking with it. And that is so important when you are investigating, you got to look at every single side to get a balanced view on what you think is going on. Trust Otherwise, the people you said earlier on, guys, trust the people you're with. Yeah. Problem with, you know, public ghost company, I'm not knocking ghost companies or anything, you do the public events, but you've got a group of people you've never met before, uh, you're with your friends, it could be 15 in that group in a little cellar or whatever, and if one person sees something, everyone starts freaking out, yeah. you know, it's it's, it's yeah. hard to get any rational point of view, if there is something actually definitely happening, you won't know. It's learning, it's all a learning curve, mate, yeah. and, and nobody's got... There's, there's no rule book with it. There isn't a book. I mean, I'm sure there is a book out there, Ghost Hunting for Dummies, that will give an opinion the same way I'm giving it, the same way Mark's giving it. But we're giving an opinion off of our experiences with, with paranormal events and uh, investigations, that sort of stuff. And what I will say to you is, and, and I'm sure Mark will echo it, if, if you are starting off, don't spend a ton of money on it. Just go like out I did. and enjoy yourself. Like going out in the field, I did spend out a little bit of money. And I'd been, yeah. I because I, I was 
more interested in sort of UFOs, crop circles, or it means interested in spirits and that kind of thing. But when I actually yeah. went, started going out in the field around 2005, 2006, I did buy, spend a little bit of money, you know. Now I think, why? You know, the only thing I really, the only bit of kit I like, make sure I have on an investigation because I'm a filmmaker and a vlogger is the camera. Yeah. But even that, I mean, that can give you false results, can't it? So, but you... oh, no, 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 I don't use. Oh, sorry, I should explain that better. I have my camera because I'm filming it. I'm filming a right. paranormal investigation. I'm not really interested in actually getting anything on camera. If it does, brilliant. But this is purely there as my filmmaker and me with my my equipment as a camera. As yeah, a but filmmaker. I've seen I've seen you catch capture weird stuff, Mark, and you and you've put it online and you said what do you think, guys, mm. and you have come back on a, a later date and said we have debunked that as. That, that and that, you know, you've actually figured out what it was. So that's to your credit, where a lot of people will capture something that they think is paranormal and everybody else thinks it is too, and they'll live off that, you know, whereas you'll say, no, look, we, we you know, it, it was it was environmental, it was something weird. Mm. We found out that somebody was down that particular corridor at that particular time standing at that window. So, you know, that's to your credit, and that's what you guys need to do. Need to do. Don't fool yourselves. Mm. And talk yourselves into believing that something is real when you all you need to do is just look at it objectively. And if you do a hundred investigations, pretty much 99 of those are going to be boring. But number 100, you're going to get that piece of evidence that is going to prove to you without a doubt that this stuff is real, you know. So, and usually at a place you're least it. expecting it. Yes, yeah. the least spooky place that you was expecting it. Yeah, it normally happens that way, doesn't it, mate? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, yeah. Abingdon Town Football Club, still one of the best we went to. Mm. Um, we were thought, oh, we didn't get there till about midnight because of a lot of faffing about. But wow, that was that was a night and a half. And you put the things. weirdest place for me, Mark, um, Kelvin Hatch. Do you remember when we did Kelvin Hatch Nuclear Bunker? Right. Now, I've never edited that video together with the phone going off. Yeah. Never, ever have I edited that together. I don't know. I've got all the footage in one box of all my old tapes, because obviously we, back in the day, used tapes and digital tapes. Um, <coughs> but, yeah, that was that was incredible. Why did I edit that, that was, together? That was um, – Kelvin Hatch, guys, he's one of these um, – do you remember earlier I was talking about uh, RAF Hompton? It's one of these early warning nuclear bunkers. Well, this particular nuclear bunker is where all the government would run in the event of a nuclear war, the Prime Minister included. They were all in this thing in Essex, this bloody great big bunker. It's over three floors, I think it is. So it's privately owned now, and you can go in there and you can have a day trip and have a walk through it. Well, you can also hire it and investigate it. Now, I don't know if anybody's ever even died there. But no, I don't think it has. It's quite a spooky place, so we decided yeah, we'll go and have a, have a gander and see if anything happens. So this one particular point is the hospital. It's got everything you could think of, a little dentist, a little hospital, this, that, the other, you know, every – because in the event of a nuclear war, you can just nip out and get something. It had to be there. So we're, we're stood in the hospital, and um, – the phone on the wall rings. Now, this is after a lot of other weird stuff that had happened in the night. We was doing glass divination, and we trusted the people we were doing it with completely. But this glass was flying around the table. She's never done it before with that particular group of people. And uh, we stood in the hospital wing, and the phone rings, which you might think, so the phones weren't connected to anything. No. Why would that phone ring? There's no reason for it. That totally, I must find that footage actually because yeah. I think it's, I'm just putting a video to one of our previous uh, videos from uh, Governor Hatch. Yeah. yeah, we were just certainly like in shock for a minute, weren't we? Like, what, what, what was this 2009, yeah. probably something like that? 2009, like that. yeah, yeah, um, yeah, incredible. Now, I always thought to myself, what right, the owner of Kelvin and Hatch did they do that just to make us to make sure people come back? But I don't think he did, no, no. Those those phones weren't connected. No, they weren't connected to anything. Because I, I think we trace them back to the actual. There is there's like a an on site telephone exchange, and it isn't actually connected to anything. So for him to make that ring, he would have had to have been on site, which he wasn't. 
He would have had to have come into that location without us seeing, which there's only one entrance in and one, one out, which we would have seen him. But that phone rang, and I've got no explanation for yeah. that to this day. He picked it up, and there was no one on the other end, was there? As, you, as you're right, it's an odd place to have. I mean, once again, I'm not going down the it's haunted route because I don't think anywhere is, but it's an odd place to have the location to hand out for oh, ghost hunting groups. Totally. It's, it, it's, it's just pointless. It's pointless. And this is Unless someone died digging it out, I don't know. It might be worth looking into the history of the place. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that was pretty strange. Because that, that was the first night I ever met Darren and Stuart. At was it really? Hatch. Yeah, it's the first time I ever met them, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, so that was like a double whammy, that one. Yeah, it was a great night. It is, it's a fantastic yeah. place. That really yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Place, the not-so-secret Kelvin and Hatch bunker. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's very good. But um, yeah, so um, so hopefully that has helped you guys. If there are any budding ghost on hunters out there that uh, are looking to get into were. this, the the dummies were they freaky. were in the, in the dummy everywhere. Yeah, they were freaky. Um, Andy's yeah, maybe literally, Andy. Keeping it secret. Yeah, could have. Now, that's actually that's interesting what you said there, Mandy, because sometimes someone's – because of emo emotion is such a powerful energy force. Um, if you put your – you know, something – that's why if you're in love, for example – I remember those – God, I can't remember that far back. If you're in love, nothing can go wrong. Nothing can go wrong in your life. Everything's perfect. Every, you're indestructible. So maybe that energy does sort of um, influence your, that surrounding area if it's something you love yeah. so much. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I explained that too well. No, it could be. It's that it's that, um, that strength of emotion, isn't it? Mm. If it's there, maybe it's imprinted in that particular building. But I'm sure there were accidents when it was being built because it's it's quite a, it's a massive place, isn't it? Yeah, it's in the 1950s. So it's into a hill it's point, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's huge, absolutely huge. That's it why is. I posted one of our early, uh, one of our videos from there because it's just a fascinating place to explore. Really is. Oh, it is. It is a really cool place. If, if, I mean, you, if you get the chance, you can visit it during the day. I'll, and uh, yeah, really cool. I was place. with some video, some psychics at the time. Who one was getting possessed. She always used to get possessed on our on our investigations. Um, and one was another one was feeling all this stuff. Oh, you know, yes. I I had I had a guy in there. <laughs> we we were actually running the event, uh, and we had these little tables. They're like little dinner tables that if you're sat on your sofa you put your dinner on it and eat off it well we, we were doing table tipping at the time you know I, I didn't hold much stock to table tipping but we was giving it a go well there was this one guy decided to do table tipping on his own with this little table and um there's, there's one room there that if you look at it it's, it's, it's like a massive open plan and it's got all desks and printers oh, another one yeah yeah well, he sat in the middle of this room on his chair with this table, and the table's bang, 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 and his fingers are on it. Oh, that's it. Show me your power. Show me your ear. And it was one of my tables, and I paid for it. And I, and I said to him, look, you're going to break that table in a minute, mate. And he went, oh, sorry, and it stopped. So <laughs> <laughs> says it all, doesn't it? Says it all. <laughs> Yeah, spirit, said, the spirit suddenly went, Oh, hang on, yeah, yeah, you don't, we yeah. don't want to break it now, do we? Yeah. Well, don't want to upset no. guys, break his table, so yeah, yeah he stopped. But it's, it's the same as the, as the as doing the crystals. I've seen people like like this, Oh, it's a really going swinging it around the red like an helicopter, you know. <laughs> I know it, 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 it's, it's, it's so much nonsense out there. Maybe we'd no, be, I, I, I hope we get a chance to work with some of you guys listening. And um, maybe we should do that. We we should organise an event in the future when all this nonsense has died down a bit where we can actually get some money together. I'm not saying you guys pay for it or anything like that. We'll find a location where we can actually do like an investigation 101 thing for you guys that haven't actually tried it before, but you are interested in it. And we'll show you the difference between an investigation and a TV investigation. Yeah. I'll say that tactfully. And um, and then you can make your own mind up. So I think that'd be that'd be quite cool. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that would be very interesting. Yeah. Um, TV versus reality. So 
off. <laughs> so, you know, if we can get Mandy on board and I'd like to get Spiral back up and running again. We tried a little oh, bit we, a couple we, of years ago, and it's hard to get yeah. everyone because everyone's got kids and all that kind of stuff. Um and, and proper proper mature things in their life now. Um whereas I have yeah, I think I think to have the spiral team in on it is a must. A, a date mm. when we can all yeah, do I mean, it. I, mean, I, thought, I mean I'd like to do some proper spiral investigation. Oh so an ongoing yeah. thing. Oh yeah. definitely. Definitely. Especially in the you know, make them hour long, make them an hour long, you know, just real just edit it down, just make it raw. Yeah. Mandy, I mean well, we wouldn't do I've said to you a million times, I wouldn't do it without you anyway. Um, you I find I've said to Mandy before, and I don't want to sort of embarrass her a little bit, but I find she's quite vital uh, yeah. on an investigation because yeah, it's like nowhere to make a cake without Mr. Kipling, isn't it? She's not yeah, exactly. No <laughs> ears and braces, no, no ego, no nothing. That's why she's so good at what she does. No, uh, I mean, I've got, I've got a lot of um, Darren. I've yeah, I love that, Darren. Things. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, I think Al, I think Al's... people that aren't afraid to say, you know, that is hanging on me. You know, I, I heard that. That's a bird. I saw the bird fly up there, or I saw somebody accidentally kick something across the floor. Hmm. You know, rather than jumping on and bringing up the height for no reason, we we got to hmm. be serious about this. If we're trying to find You're serious about it, bring your up. That's an in joke. I'm sorry, it's an in joke from um, uh, Essex. That's <laughs> a worry. We still got to find that footage. We still got to find that footage. Oh, you guys! But yeah, as, as, as you know, we, we we take it seriously. We don't take ourselves seriously. But we take what we do seriously, which is a big difference. <laughs> um, I think that's anything else you want to add? I'll do. I mean, no, I'm all right, mate. I've waffled enough tonight. I think. Um, I think you should hang on to that list, so because I think there's, there's plenty more on there. If there's if you haven't covered <sighs> everything, yeah, there's one or two, but. Um... Next week, we are going to talk about um, UFOs. Now, before you go, oh, you know, right, there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on at the moment with regards to UFOs. Now, we're not tinfoil hat wearing weirdos or anything like that. There I mean, is a, well, I maybe, there is, there is something going on at the moment, all right? The US government are crapping it because they have got to come out with a report by the 21st, which is – that's pretty close, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's not 21st. Tomorrow. 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 It was our Freedom Day. Yes. They've got to come out with a report by tomorrow saying uh, basically what they know about UFOs. Full disclosure. Right. Yeah. Now, now they full. have actually earlier on this month come out with a statement and said, this stuff is real. It is happening. We are not responsible for it. We're not saying it's aliens, but basically we don't know what it is. And they're under pressure from the Russians and the Chinese because they've got a lot of information on it as well. Um, so there's stuff that's in the skies that we don't know what it is. The Americans don't know what it is. The Russians don't know what it is. The Chinese don't know what it is, apparently. But it's happening, and it's I think it's worth talking about. And it does fall under the paranormal umbrella. OK, because there is no scientific explanation for what's going on. So I think it's important that we talk about it. There is a few cases that we'll talk about next week. Um, we'll talk about Roswell because that's basically where it all began. Everybody's heard of Roswell, but very few know the actual story behind it. We'll talk about um, Rendlesham. Yeah, if that's all right with you, Mark, because that's quite. Oh, that's... I'm, I'm fascinated by the Rendlesham story. We'll also try and get a special guest on my friend Rob. Who's uh, yeah. like like Daz has, has studied UFOs for a long, long time, um, yeah. not just and um, really knows his subject. So I've, I've said to Daz earlier, I'd like to get them to talk, talking, and I'm very interested in it as well. I'm, I haven't got the knowledge that they've got, um, although I've had two UFO experiences or UAP mm -hmm. experiences. Um, so that's yeah, I'll speak to Robin see if I can get we can get him on next week. Yeah, I'll, I'd love it. I would love it if he could come on because um, what what I'm trying to st to stick to is is the mass sightings. You know, not these ones where like one or two people have seen it, but the mass sightings like Roswell, like Rendlesham, the, the Phoenix Manor. lights, mm. yeah, Rudlow Manor, the Phoenix lights, the the mass sighting in Belgium that um, neglected to make the news for some unknown reason. So these these really compelling cases that could just change your way of thinking from the fact that we are a bunch of tinfoil hat wearing weirdos to that there is something actually going on. And that's what we're trying to do with these shows. We're trying to open your minds a little bit more to what actually is mm. 
happening and what's being reported. Okay, so yeah, that'll be next week. So thank you. So I mean, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us tonight. It's been very, very f- a lot of fun. Uh, I've, uh, I've put the pressure a little bit on Daz here. He's done all the most of the talking. Tonight. Daz, you called me uh, Daz. Did and I? Mitchell and Priory. Gaz, Gaz. Yes. Daz is Gaz. The reason for that is I'm looking at Darren's name, <laughs> Longhurst, and that's why. I hope he shows um, this bit of footage, guys, where he says that I'm here in the priest hole with Daz. I know. Yeah. I'm embar- yeah. There's nothing more embarrassing than getting someone's name wrong when you know them. It's so embarrassing. Or you see someone you haven't seen for ages and you can't remember their name, but they can remember yours. That's happened to everybody. Yeah, that's I'm easy. Sure. Just call them mate. That's what I do. Yeah, what what I do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Oh, well, uh, Thank you, Rick. No, cheers, Great. guys. Thanks, thanks for tuning in with us. Um, it means a lot. I know that sounds like a cheesy line, but it really does. The fact... We, we, me and Mark are just having a chat. We would do this if it was just me and Mark having a chat. But the mm. fact that you guys are taking time out and listening does mean a lot to us, all right? So uh, to get you guys involved with it, brilliant. Thanks so Frank, much. read your messages. You could have been on tonight. Read your messages. You've been on Facebook. Yeah, Don't you see you have a message? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Frank. <laughs> I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon anyway. Thank you, Andy. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll have to decide whether we're going to have one next week or the week after. We'll, yeah. we'll have a chat about that, Mark. We don't know. Uh, do regardless, guys, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. You take care. I'm just going to play out. I'm going to try and play out with our little logo, a little thing. Go take on, care. Mate. Trust me. If-